If there's one thing Mr. Kubo is good at, it's creating intricate, detailed, genuinely unique designs for his characters, their transformations, and the abilities they use. Although I believe his writing is underrated in various ways, and his greatest flaw, if you can even call it a flaw, is that he either makes his storytelling way too vague for the audience and up to the individual reader's interpretation, or he misuses some of the coolest characters in the series which have so much potential to be more than they were shown to be. It is, however, truly undeniable how talented he is at creating special looking characters that are genuinely pleasing to the human eye. And with that being said, today's video will be dedicated to two of the coolest designs he ever created, Dongai Ichigo and the final Getsuga Tenjo. Nuggets. In today's video, I'm going to explain and clarify a lot to do with these forms, so if you're this far through the video, please give the video a thumbs up as it does help the video's ability to grow, and also subscribe if you're new to my channel. I upload and will be uploading a lot more Bleach content in the future, so if you support me, I will continue to support Bleach by making plenty of content in the future. We're also close to 150,000 subscribers, so it would mean a lot if you did subscribe. I believe it goes without saying that these two forms of Ichigo are easily the most contentious, but also the most interesting in the series. Ichigo's power feels different than before. He doesn't feel like a soul reaper, a hollow, or a human. He feels like an anomaly that was placed into Bleach from a different series. It almost has a Super Saiyan 3 feel to it, or even a mastered Ultra Instinct level of aura, as Ichigo has done this weird type of training that only happened due to pure coincidence that Aizen decided to destroy the cleaner, and he also appears in a stage that is beyond Bunkai with his Zanpakuto fused to his arm. This is unironically hyperbolic time chamber Ichigo. With his long emo looking 2000s anime hair as if he came straight out of a Bring Me The Horizon recording session before coming to fight Aizen, his edgy expression on his face, an improved physique, and his power that can't even be sensed by the villain, this is stoicism incarnate. Like, these two forms on the screen, it's almost like heaven and earth and how different they feel in strength when you actually look at them. And it's insane because although this Ichigo was being nerfed by his inner conflict over his previous battles with the Espada and genuine fear over Aizen's Silver Surfer mode, he is still able to sense Aizen's power, whereas Ishin, Urahara, and Yodoichi cannot. Ishin even states only those in the same realm of power as Aizen's current level would be able to sense him. And Gein makes an interesting offhand comment about his current form being, quote, incomplete. Even Captain Aizen would be disappointed in you right now, and you sensed it, right? Meaning he was close to becoming a transcendent being even while in that Bankai form, which had Zenkai boost from all of his battles with the Espada. Literally the only times Aizen can be sensed are when he lowers his spiritual pressure to play with his food when he is chasing Ichigo's friends around Katakura Town, and when Ichigo appears in his Dongai form, which explains why Tatsuki can sense him. This is really a big deal as Ishin's statement was made about a form of Aizen that is two transformations weaker than the one Dongai Ichigo faces off against when he appears. It should also be noted that Aizen only took damage in this battle here because he was fighting while not on guard. He was enjoying mocking them and testing out his new powers. When he did decide to flex his new power, however, he literally one-shot every single one of them. From Deus Ex Machina to Arspool to Kubo, quote-unquote, riding himself into a corner with Aizen, these forms are both confusing and random, plus very odd, as they only appear for such a short period of time. But it gives you a degree of uncertainty that makes you go, yo, I actually wonder how this form of Ichigo would do against the high tiers in the war arc, or hey, do you reckon Dongai Ichigo could solo Marine Ford by himself? Because it just feels that powerful when shown to us readers and watchers, especially with the way it dominates the villain who was already, in his base form, too hard to deal with, let alone the multiple transcendent forms he went into with weird measures, 100 year long plans, and manipulating the Hogyoku, an object which has immeasurable power and does not obey the laws of physics to reach this stage. And then you consider all those facts and how much trouble Aizen went through just to get to this stage, considering he was a guy that was already insanely strong, right? And Ichigo just surpasses all of it, which gives us that overpowered feeling I mentioned. And then on top of all of that, he can transform into another form above that, which makes the Dongai form and the villain look even less imposing. Let's begin. 
Aizen states Ichigo is a dimensional tier above him, making him 5th dimensional. I believe the best way to start this video is to address the most common misconception I see when Mugetsu is brought up, which is the controversial statement made by Aizen during their fight. All Aizen is stating during his inner monologue is that Ichigo is so far above him in power that he believes that's a good way to explain what he is viewing before his very eyes. Now you could definitely argue author intent here as Mr. Kubo did get Aizen to make this statement and there's a lot of emphasis on it. However, we do see that Aizen ends up reaching another level of power right here, but he is sealed before he can actually utilize this power. And he claims this newfound power will eventually surpass Ichigo. What you see in the the war is the level of power Aizen would have hypothetically reached. Now, whether or not it is stronger than Mugetsu is another conversation entirely, and although he didn't transform into some weird alien looking form again, his body passively reached that level mentioned while he is in the Mukin. Ichigo in his Dongai form was partially fused with his Zanpakuto like Aizen, then he completely fused with it in his Mugetsu form, just like how Aizen did at the end of the battle, and then appeared in the war completely fused with his Zanpakuto. This isn't me making a claim that Mugetsu and War Aizen are comparable in any facet because their ways of reaching complete fusion was achieved via different methods, and there's a lot of contradicting statements in the manga from both sides of the argument. I believe Aizen is so shocked in this moment because he went from being completely infatuated with his newfound level of power, which surpassed Hollow and Soul Reaper, and he believed not a single person in the Soul Society was his equal now, to being completely overwhelmed by Ichigo's power. I mean, Aizen had contingency plans set up for Yamamoto as as he was aware of the threat that he would be in Bankai. He purposely left Kenpachi in Hueco Mundo, and the second he reaches his first two forms of the Hogyoku, he has absolutely zero fear in anyone being able to match him. To him, he was already in an entirely different league above the Shinigami, so to see someone else beyond his own power was dumbfounding. Especially when just earlier that same day, he had seen Ichigo in a much weaker state. This is why he was so confused. If Ichigo truly were an entire dimensional tier above Aizen, why was it so easy for Aizen to continuously close that gap in power with the Hogyoku. If he truly were a dimensional tier above him, as he even describes, he wouldn't even be able to react or comprehend Ichigo's existence. A being that is a complete dimensional tier above you would be almost impossible to even interact with. We also seen that even when Aizen transformed mid-battle against Dongai Ichigo, the most that he could do was burn his arm, and you could even make consistent arguments that the only reason this happened was because Ichigo was not taking him seriously, and this is shown to us when he slept away the floating white rings while Aizen is holding him by the throat. Now if we do for a second say that this statement is factually correct, as Kubo did make Aizen say this in the manga, it would be consistent with the statement from the data book Unmasked, which thanks to Seth the Programmer was translated saying the following. The ultimate technique in which the user becomes Zongetsu. Although it possesses a power that far exceeds everything, its cost is that the user loses their spiritual power. This is from the official Bleach data book, Unmasked. This would also be consistent with the scaling between Ishin, Aizen, and Ichigo when he's in his Dongai form, as Ishin makes a very specific comment that when he swings at Aizen, it feels like he isn't even there. It also aligns perfectly with Aizen being so strong that he can one-shot a being that doesn't operate via the laws of physics or by that of spiritual pressure but actually the idea of reason. This means Aizen is at the level where he doesn't need to just defeat someone physically or with raw spiritual pressure. He can wipe them from existence like Ichibei's ability that allows him to control the concept of the name and the power associated with that name. This would also consistently line up with statements made about the Sokyoku, which is stated to be able to overwhelm everything in existence, along with various other dimension destroying feats from much weaker characters than these two. When it comes to Bleach power scaling at this stage in 2020, saying things like this should pretty much be the norm, but I feel like I have to hold back when I do talk about this stuff even though there is a massive preponderance of evidence that proves that characters of this level and this caliber in general are getting to some insane feats that far surpasses just being quick and being able to hit really hard. To close this part of the video, it's either A, truly dimensional tearing and Mugetsu is an absolute monster of a character alongside all of the supporting evidence that proves such, or B, Aizen is using over-exaggerated pseudoscience language to describe the strength of someone he just can't fathom. Remember that time when Uryu sensed Ukiora's second release spiritual pressure and he claimed that it was alien-like? I won't be making any objective claims here, but I guess try to be logical about the Aizen statement and think for yourselves what seems more realistic with the evidence I've provided. 
I'm going to keep this part relatively short and sweet because so many people blow me away when they ask me this, but Dongai Ichigo absolutely destroys Vasto Lorde Ichigo. Like, I shouldn't even really have to say that, but you would be surprised as to how many people ask me this or actually suggest this matchup in my comment section on Bleach-related videos and the countless times that the chat has brought it up on my Twitch streams where I talk about Bleach and power scaling. Let me just run through a few things to explain this in a very simplistic way. The hollow inside of Ichigo was the manifestation of his Shinigami powers, as when Ichigo was born, White, who had fused with Masaki, was then birthed into Ichigo when he was born. Thus, when the Shinigami powers given to him by Rukia were taken away, his Asuchi ended up becoming the hollow inside of him. Or in another sense, it was always going to be this way. As you can argue, Ichigo's father being a Shinigami means by default he would eventually learn how to become one too. Old Man Zongetsu also tells Ichigo that he always had the ability to become a Shinigami, Though the Shinigami powers lay dormant until Byakuya removed Rukia's Shinigami powers from him. Normally, Shinigami have their own unique spirits inside of them and they represent their Shinigami powers, but Ichigo's case is special as he was born with a hollow inside of him before he activated his dormant Shinigami powers. And because the hollow inside of Ichigo was already made up of a Shinigami soul, he appeared as his Asuchi. It's very weird, but it does make sense. If we were to say, hypothetically take a look inside of Shinji's inner world, he would have a Zanpakuto spirit and a hollow inside of him, because he was holified after he was already a full-fledged Shinigami, whereas with Ichigo, his situation was reversed. Anywho, I'm bringing this up because when Ichigo speaks to Zongetsu, who we later find out isn't actually his Asuchi and is the physical representation of his Quincy powers, and this is why he appears as Yuhabak in his inner world, well, this man known as Zongetsu actually rips White out of Ichigo and makes him appear not just as a hollow, but as the complete full Shihaku show form of him. Then what happens is they fuse together into a hybrid of the two. It's basically the fusion dance, and with three Three straight months of training added on top of it to make it even stronger. When Ichigo fights Ukiora in his Vasto Lorde form, he is being completely controlled by White. Even the fake Yuhabak says there were times where he was unable to restrict White and White was helping Ichigo to win his battles when he was struggling. Mr. Kubo even draws a sketch at the end of the transformation chapter symbolizing that White has not only taken control as the horse when the king has fallen, but not even his Shinigami badge can contain this strength. This actually explains why Bankai Ichigo was so strong Wrong when he appears in Karakura Town and can actually sense Aizen, whereas many individuals who were previously much stronger than Ichigo actually couldn't. At that moment in time, he isn't being restricted. This is unironically a pretty impressive feat for first form Yami when you really think about what's going on, and look, granted, he did fight Ichigo with only half of Aishu Hakusho on, in fact, it was actually less than half of Aishu Hakusho. Him still being able to compete with this Ichigo with half of Aishu Hakusho on, and also the mask being notably heavier than usual, it's still pretty good for Yami because it makes his first form look good, but it also isn't inconsistent because you would think, so does that make Byakuya and Kenpachi also transcended at this stage? Like that sounds a bit weird, right? But when you think about it, first form Yami, Kenpachi and Byakuya, right? They all scale directly to half Shuhaku Show Ichigo with a new mask that's amped by the badge not being in place and all of his Zenkai boosts in the previous battle, right? And then you have second release Yami who would then get a massive increase of anywhere from 10 plus times, right? So it's pretty consistent, but it's also like really impressive for characters like Yami, Kenpachi, and Byakuya to all be around that ballpark of power and it does explain why Aizen did purposely leave Kenpachi in Hueco Mundo. And all of the captains that are actually in Hueco Mundo and in Katakura Town, they actually have the confidence that Ichigo will be able to defeat Aizen. Some might say this is only because he isn't under the influence of Kyoka Soigetsu, but when it comes to power, Unahan is genuinely shocked at how strong he actually is when they're running through the Garganta. If you have doubts surrounding the legitimacy of these sketches at the end of the manga chapters, Mr. Kubo uses them quite a lot to drop hints to the audience, he uses them to show a lot of symbolism in the series, and he even uses them to tell the story. As he actually drew a sketch of Loli being saved from falling to her death by Uryu firing an arrow into her clothing, which later on ends up being shown in the anime. Imagine you take this full Shihakusho Ichigo and White, and you fuse him together with his Quincy powers. Now at this stage, the fake Yuha Bark is yet to show anything crazy when it comes to power, but even an elephant versus an elephant with an ant on its back is still stronger than the aforementioned elephant. To further explain what's going on here, Ichigo trains with these two for three months inside of his inner world. Not only is this a really cool stamina feat, as Ichigo 
Ichigo is taking damage in real time during the meditation and training, but Ishin also has to hold the Dongai open for that entire time span. Ishin actually confirms in the manga page on screen that this place operates rather differently than the outside world. Time is 2000 times denser inside the Dongai. In other words, if you trained in here for 2000 hours, only an hour would pass on the outside. The Soul Society has no way of containing Kotozu, but there is a way to stop the Koryu. This is called Kaikyo Kote, also known as Boundary Fixation in English. It usually takes several dozen low-level Soul Reapers pouring in their spirit energy by means of a special technique to hold Koryu in place, but I can do all that by myself. I'll hold Koryu until I run out of spirit energy. I think I can do it for about 2,000 hours. That's a little less than three months. During this training, they are not only slowly becoming one in their powers, but they are getting insanely stronger in such a short period of time. The Vasto Lorde and Ukiora could be sensed and felt, but Dongai Ichigo couldn't at all. Not even by Aizen's Hogyoku monster form. If Ichigo were to hypothetically transform into his Vasto Lorde form here after the training, without transforming into his aged Dongai form, rather than here, the Vasto Lorde form would be stronger than when it fought Ukiora. You see, Aizen was actually anticipating Ichigo to awaken his Vasto Lorde powers or even control them, and was not only looking forward to fighting this form, but he was hoping that Ichigo would just in general reach a new level of power that would combat him. This makes sense as to why he gave Ukiora a second release form and had Ukiora and Grimjiao help bring out his powers in battle, which he references to Ichigo. Aizen knew the strength of the previous white from everything but the rain and that it wasn't actually strong enough at the time, but he expected the evolved version to be strong enough to contest him. There was even a plan made by Aizen to kill Ichigo's friends, then hang their bodies outside of Katakura Town for him to find them. He wanted to torture Ichigo into becoming stronger. This is how badly he wanted to fight Ichigo in a stronger state. It's kind of odd when you actually think about it because while Aizen is on his death wish mission to make the Oaken then destroy the Zero Division and the Soul King, the entire time he is hoping for Ichigo to ascend and be a threat to him which Gein even talks about. Just like the Yami feat I briefly mentioned earlier, this genuinely makes Ukiora's second release form very impressive if you believe Aizen was fully aware that he actually had the form, as this means Aizen gave it to him purposely in advance to help develop and bring out Ichigo's Vasto Lorde form. When he leaves with Gein and Tosin to go to Karakura Town, he purposely leaves Waiko Mundo, Orihime, and Ichigo all part of Ukiora's responsibility, and he trapped Kenpa in Hueco Mundo with Yami, who was the secret Zero all along. At this stage in time, there's way too much supporting evidence and narrative consistency to doubt Ukiora and Yami were the two strongest Esparta. Anywho, Aizen, who in base is stated stronger than all of the Esparta by Gein, then goes on to evolve with the Hogyoku four different times and then a fifth, which we don't actually end up seeing. It's very arguable to say that Aizen would absolutely destroy the Vasto Lode form which fought Ukiora in any of of his Hogyoku forms, yet we get to see what Dongai Ichigo does to a much stronger Aizen. Once again, he couldn't even sense Dongai Ichigo even before he went into his Mugetsu form. To further back the stuff that I've said, Aizen made contingency plans for Kenpachi, Yamamoto, and Ichigo, but nobody else. He was also confident enough to fight everyone after he transformed, which includes Kenpachi, Yamamoto, and Ichigo. In fact, to go further with this, he even makes statements about Yamamoto being the only person in his way in his base form before reaching these Hogyoku stages, and he completely ignores Unahana, who is literally meters if not kilometers away from him saying this. Aizen actually left Kenpachi and Waco Mundo to give him time to reach immortality so that he would be able to deal with Kenpachi later and thus making sense as to why he left the number zero Esparta in Waco Mundo rather than having Yami and Ukiura come with him once again. I don't want to talk in a very condescending tone, but Mr. Kubo did show us that Ukiura had a secret release form which none of the other Esparta have and then we find out that Yami is the secret number zero all along. He didn't just do this for the sake of wasting time time drawing on paper, like it's there for a reason, these two are the strongest objectively. And not only do you have Ukiora who is his most trusted Esparta and he sends him on more missions than anybody else, which is also followed alongside the statements made where Yami only follows Ukiora because he actually respects him out of all of the Esparta, it is not only once again very consistent with the scaling, but it makes sense as to why Aizen purposely left them in Waco Mundo. They had a further job to do. The manifestation 
version of Yuha Bark even makes an interesting comment towards Ichigo about him not being able to correctly holify, which means use this Vasto Lorde form at will. Which, if you were a person who was reading Bleach as it comes out weekly, you'd probably think, oh, this is the moment where he's going to be able to take full advantage of this form and then he can fight with it, right? I mean, we've just seen it against Ukiora, it's stated to be really strong, it's obviously very impressive, right, in every facet, and then later on we see that he ends up using a form like this against Yuha Bark and the War Arc, right? It would make sense at the time, but Zongetsu doesn't teach him this. Instead, they fuse together and become something stronger. Which by fighting this fusion form over and over for three straight months, slowly becoming one with his sword, his Asuchi, his Quincy powers, and the hollow powers inside of him, all of this training and the three straight months he spent inside of his head helps him attain his Dongai form and learn the Mugetsu. Once again, to end off this part of the video, Dongai Ichigo is insanely stronger than Vasto Lode Ichigo, let alone Mugetsu, which is in a completely different league of its own. Now, some may say that that was unnecessary to talk about, but I think it's cool because I can put the nail in the coffin in that conversation and also bring up some new scaling around the characters at that part in the story. So some people might be wondering, is this Ichigo stronger than the Ichigo at the end of the series or full bring Bankai Ichigo? Well, although I'm not going to talk about the end of series Ichigo much because that will be saved for Naruto vs Ichigo with Seth the Programmer, I will just say this. You'll find out the definitive answer when we make that video. And there are a lot of statements made by characters like Yuha Bark, side characters, and statements from novel slash video games that need to be explained further. And to be frank, Seth and I are actually coming up with completely new scaling for our video. Plus, I obviously don't want to spoil that video, regardless of whether or not he is or isn't stronger. As for the full bring Bankai Ichigo that fought Ginja and Quilge, it is established that the majority of captains have trained since the time skip. Byakia and Renji have become much stronger, and so have many others. But characters like Unahana and Yamamoto have not only stagnated, but it's confirmed their strength hasn't changed. In fact, Yuha Bark believes Yamamoto is weaker than he should be, in their confrontation, as he purposely refused to get his arm healed. But even with that being said, he believes he is the only Quincy who can control his Bankai's power, even in his nerf state, and without using his real Quincy powers, as his eyes are technically still closed up until his fight with Ichibe. And at that point, he still hasn't even fused with the Mimihagi yet. Anywho, having only one arm is extremely important because this could mean Yamamoto is two times weaker than before, and Kenpachi using two hands closed the gap between him and Noyatora, who went into his resurrection. Tosin confirms holification is comparable to Bankai. In fact, he's more confident in holification than using his Bankai against Komomura. So I don't doubt Noyatora is, in fact, getting an increase of power by around 10 times, as this is consistent with the multipliers of Seros, and also Grim just states when he gets his arm back that his power has returned, just like how Yami was actually going to be kicked from the Esparta for only having one arm, like Grim Jell. It's a much bigger deal than people realize. There are countless examples of one arm being something Kubo places an emphasis on throughout Bleach, showing me he has a true appreciation for the art of sword fighting. Anyway, I mentioned all of this because Mugetsu is stated to be the strongest thing in the Bleach lore during the Aizen vs Ichigo battle, which is fascinating because this data book statement is made while characters like Unahana, Yamamoto, and the Zero Division are all a part of the story. In fact, Aizen in his butterfly form actually thinks he is powerful enough to take them down, then battle Ichigo. He purposely wants Ichigo to attain higher power, as Ichigo's potential seems to impress Aizen more than the thought of the Zero Division. Ichigo's potential is even hyped up by Urahara when talking to Yodoichi, stating that his potential is greater than his own. This means Ichigo is above one arm Yamamoto from the War Arc, and also above full bring Bankai Ichigo, who while damaged, was able to surprise Yuha Bark and damage him. Yuha Bark even makes a claim about it not being wise to fight him while injured in this form implying if he wasn't injured, he could tussle with that nerfed form of Yuha Bark. Once again, let me be very clear, that form of Yuha Bark is nowhere near full power, but Ichigo can still damage him, and Yuha Bark specifically states he would be better off fighting him uninjured. You can see a very similar expression on the faces of the Quincy's and the Captains when Ichigo appears in this form in the Soul Society. He even shocks Yuha Bark when he appears, that's how strong he is in this form even while injured. Therefore, with the data book statement I mentioned earlier, 
Mugetsu is unarguably above full ring Bankai Ichigo, as that form of Ichigo is weaker than not just two-armed Yamamoto, but one-armed Yamamoto. Which means that Mugetsu Ichigo could unironically defeat this nerfed Yuha Bark and Yamamoto in Bankai. Once again, to be very clear, this is a nerfed Yuha Bark that 1. does not have his Quincy powers, 2. does not have the Mimihagi amp, and 3. does not have his almighty ability. It's also confirmed word for word in other pages of the Bleach data books and other source material multiple times just how strong Aizen and Ichigo have become, but more so specifically Aizen, which helps scale Ichigo as obviously Ichigo is much stronger than this Aizen. If Yamamoto's power has not changed during the time skip from the Karakura Town battle between him and Aizen to the battle that he has with Yuha Bark to the point where Yuha Bark believes that he is weaker than he should be, and Aizen believes that not just in his monster form or his butterfly form, right, but he believes in the previous forms before that that he had already surpassed every Shinigami, which would naturally include Yamamoto, as he actually states that base to base he's unsure that he would win against Yamamoto, but he's extremely extremely confident once he goes through his Hogoku transformations. You could say for the sake of the argument when Aizen makes that claim that mm, he's unsure of the outcome that this also includes what his thoughts would be in the future about how strong he would be with the Hogoku but there's no way to prove that he would have known how strong he would actually become other than the fact that he's talking about what's happening right now like he believes the two versions of them would most likely it, it could go either way right so that's already an interesting claim but when he does actually get the Hogoku powers which continuously surprise him once again again, he has complete confidence that he has surpassed every Shinigami, which helps a lot with this scaling because if Dongai Ichigo is above the final form of Aizen, which is the monster one, which is beyond any of the statements that he made where he says that he has surpassed Shinigami and Hollows, right? You have Dongai Ichigo who scales above monster Aizen, who scales above Yamamoto, who Yamamoto's strength hasn't increased according to Yuha Bark, which puts Dongai Ichigo in the position where if he was to battle Yuha Bark and the War Arc, they're having a very very back and forth pitch battle. Once again, this is the nerfed Yuha Bark I'm talking about. And then he has Mugetsu on top of that. It's not crazy to say that Mugetsu Ichigo would have defeated the Yuha Bark that first appears in the war. Now, as for the wording in the thumbnail, which I'm sure a lot of you are curious about, Prime Soul King is a whole different animal, so I'm not going to say that Mugetsu stacks up to him. He might be in the same ballpark of power when it comes to these kind of characters, but the data book statement about Mugetsu being the strongest attack in the Bleach lore is made while the Soul King exists as a quadriplegic. So although Mugetsu and Dongai, right, we already have Dongai scaling above the first Yuha Bark that appears, then you have Mugetsu, which confidently destroys that Yuha Bark. It's not that far-fetched to say that even without a time skip hypothetical power-up, with this data book statement and how much stronger Mugetsu is compared to any form of them previously, like the Dongai form, Yamamoto at full power, and all of Aizen transformations, Mugetsu Ichigo should pretty easily beat the Zero division and also the soul king that actually exists at that current point in time once again prime soul king's a different story just like prime yuha bark with all of his power-ups and all of the other things that he gets later but that seems to be where he stacks up to state this once more aizen literally created wonder Weiss with the intent of sealing yamamoto's zanpak toe so he wouldn't have to fight someone he conceded would most likely beat him and then when he reaches transcendence in a form much weaker than monster aizen he claims he has surpassed shinigami and hollow as I talked about earlier, he even stops fighting in character as there is no need for him to be on guard anymore. He is just that powerful. And no, bringing up Gein's surprise attack is a null point as when Aizen actually tries, he one-shots him just like he did to Urahara, Yodoichi, and Ishin. And also, Gein hit him off guard, made his body explode, and even without the Hogyoku, he still powered up, reformed, and came back stronger too, so it's like, even while off guard, you can't do anything to this dude. Also, also, to clarify, there is a silhouette of Ginjo shown when Yuha Bark talks about Ichigo gaining his powers back, but what Yuha Bark is saying is the Ichigo in front of him has regained the immense powers he had against Aizen, and the Ginjo part is saying his powers he lost in general. It would be absolutely ret- 
for Yuha Bark to imply those Shinigami powers were of that level as he swiftly dealt with Ichigo when he actually decided to use his power and before his powers returned. The Almighty, the Mimihagi was fused with him, etc. Yet the powers that he has when he fights full powered Yuha Bark actually impress him. To end this point of the video, Mugetsu Ichigo is a high tier threat even up until the end of the war arc. As even when Aizen comes back, Urahara is kind of unsure but does imply Aizen has most likely become stronger than the power he had against Ichigo. Does that mean that he has surpassed him? As even Monster Aizen didn't surpass Dongai, let alone Mugetsu, where Aizen has the inner monologue stating that this dude's level of power is so insane that I can't even comprehend the dimensional plane that it's on? Well, that's debatable. I would confidently state that Mugetsu scales above Yamamoto, majority of the Quincy's if not every single one of them, due to the statement that only Yuha Bar can contain one-armed Yamamoto's Bankai, and I'd say he is above the first version of Yuha Bar that we see, otherwise giving him the benefit of the doubt against any other version of Yuha Bar is just way too contentious, and I'm not going to make any objective claims about that, it just seems awfully consistent to say that that's where he scales. A lot of people still to this day, around 10 years on, want to know just how much stronger did Ichigo become when he appears in his Dongai form, and then how big is the increase of power while he is in Mugetsu. Now the meta I have created to come to the answer is incredibly straightforward and has various factors that support this being the case. On screen I've created a very simple chart that shows you the numbers, and this is how it should work. The transformation of Bankai is stated to be 5-10 to 10 times of an increase in power, Urahara compares the Resurrection directly to Bankai. Tosin states his holification is better than going Bankai as he is a Shinigami who has lived long enough to master his Bankai and then goes into his Resurrection, showing that Resurrection would have a better increase in power than Bankai, or at least a solid times 10 if any Asparta uses it, not say a Fraction, which seems to be the example shown to us when in data books it says things like a several times increase in power when it comes to Resurrection, which just does not make sense as if captains are getting a 5 to 10 times increase when they go Bankai, yet the Esparta are only getting a 3 times increase in power or somewhere around there. That means the captains are just <laughs> slapping all the Esparta like nothing. So I believe that when you find statements that say several times or five times or anything around there, it's talking about the absolute bare minimum and most likely referring to Fraxion and their Resurrections. And once again, like I said about Tosun, Urahara and captains versus the Esparta, it just wouldn't make sense for it to be that weak. But anyway, Anyway, base Ukiora goes first release, making him 10 times stronger than his base. He then goes second release, which makes him another 10 times stronger, and arguably even higher, because we don't actually know how much of an increase the second release is, and it does seem to be very special among the series. Though I will stick to just times 10 to make this as simple as possible and not dive into headcanon ideas. This would make him 100 times stronger than his base form when he is in second release. 10 times 10 is 100, bada bing, bada boom. We know that Sero Oscuras, Guron Sero, and Lanzaro Lampago all multiply his attack potency anywhere from 1 to 20 times, meaning even if you lowball the Resurrection to half, we still know the Vasto Lorde is around that 100 times multiplier and beyond, as it casually negates all of these attacks with casual Seros, and especially keeping in mind that it wasn't going all out and also had half of a Shuhaku Show on. The full Shuhaku Show version of his Vasto Lorde form is actually shown inside of Ichigo's inner world during the Dongai and Mugetsu training. Basically, Vasto Lode Ichigo is around 100 times his Bankai when it comes to power. Base Aizen and Vasto Lode Ichigo are meant to be in the same ballpark of power by law. Aizen then goes through four transformations, all of which would have multipliers of around 10 times each, because the Hogyoku could easily perform a feat like this, considering it's stated to have immeasurable power, and it is the device that casually gave the Esparta massive upgrades in power, and in Aizen case, he is completely fused with the Hogyoku itself. To assume that it would have lower multipliers than Bankai and Resurrection would be pretty odd to be honest. In fact, I'd say that it would be higher than 10 times per transformation, though once again I'm going to lowball this for the sake of simplicity. This means that Aizen is arguably 100 to 400 times his base Shinigami form, especially considering the fact that he actually believes he has surpassed Hollow and Shinigami. Dongai Ichigo, when he appears 
appears, is so strong that he can't even be sensed by Monster Aizen, which is the final form that Aizen actually battles in before he is sealed. This means that Dongai Ichigo is tens to hundreds of times stronger than base Aizen and the Vasto Lorde, but more so leaning towards the hundreds. It also doesn't help the case that with Dongai Ichigo, throughout the majority of the battle he isn't really even being serious, he's just mocking Aizen and occasionally flexing his power. But even with that being said, this unmotivated bad mood Ichigo is still showing us these crazy feats. Then when he goes into Mugetsu form, Aizen is so intimidated by this power that he believes he is an entire dimensional plane above him, making it actually impossible to state how much stronger Ichigo is at this moment, as he doesn't really do much in the form except attack a single time. But the data book statement I mentioned earlier about him being the strongest in the entire story, the dimensional feats, and the Sokyoku statement, means you could throw out a vapid number like thousands of times of an increase, or it's just completely unquantifiable, which... It is. It's unquantifiable. Once again, if you're curious how much of an increase Ichigo gets in Dongai and in Mugetsu, in Dongai you're looking at hundreds of times consistently, in Mugetsu it's genuinely unquantifiable. Just know that the transformation of Mugetsu is pretty f***ing strong. Another really impressive feat from Dongai Ichigo that coincides with his other insane dimensional tearing feats is when he casually stands inside of Aizen's Kurohitsugi and destroys it with his bare hands. Hado 90. Kurohitsugi, Black Coffin. This is Kurohitsugi performed with full incantation by a being who transcends hollows and soul reapers. It is a torrent of gravity that distorts space and time, a thing someone like you could never comprehend, Ichigo Kurosaki. Now quantifying what's going on here is rather weird, but I will try my best to explain this ability and how it works in layman terms so everyone knows exactly what Aizen is not only stating, but what he's actually doing. The Black Coffin, also known as Kurohitsugi, Hitsugi, although on the outside appears to be this big black scary box that just appears and shreds apart the opponent's body once it is done, actually functions similarly to that of a micro black hole. A black hole itself is a region of space-time where gravity is so strong that nothing, no particles or even electromagnetic radiation such as light, can escape from it. The theory of general relativity predicts that a sufficiently dense mass can deform space-time to form what we know as a black hole. The black coffin appears to be based on this not only in its name but also in traits as it is similarly a compact ball of gravitational force, which virtually turns whatever is inside of it to dust just from the sheer pressure of the gravity, which is an aspect that Eisen emphasizes. You can already see the stark similarities between them, but I would also like to address that though the black coffin operates Similar to a black hole, a black hole does not necessarily have a set power. Black holes vary in range of size. You can have something as small as a micro black hole, one that is so tiny you wouldn't be aware of its existence, all the way to a supermassive black hole, the same one that is theorized to be the axis in which our universe rotates around due to its sheer density and gravitational binding energy. The black coffin doesn't display nearly that level of energy, but it has shown the capability to affect characters who can withstand attacks on a planetary scale, such as Captain Class, even when it was barely a third of its full power in the Soul Society arc. It was even shown to be able to destroy the Mimihagi eyeballs completely to the point where there wasn't even debris in the area where the attack was used. And Aizen says, The gravity of Kurohitsugi has created a fissure in the canopy. It's a highly dense mass of Reishi. Strike it once more with my spiritual pressure and it will destroy itself. And to go back to the Captain Class planetary argument that I briefly just mentioned, Aizen actually believed that it had an Enough power to affect Dongai Ichigo. Now, the fact that it didn't, that's completely fine, but we know for a fact that it actually would have killed the Ichigo that was in Katakura Town, as that Ichigo couldn't even do anything to base Aizen when he was in holification. So once again, I'm not saying his Kurohitsugi is a flat-out supermassive black hole when it comes to power, or it has infinite mass, meaning that Ichigo has infinite attack potency and infinite lifting strength, right? A lot of people tend to say silly things like that when it comes to black holes, and they usually misunderstand the science behind them, but realistically the Kurohitsugi is doing exactly what a black hole does by nature, so we could literally say Aizen is summoning a micro black hole inside of this box, and this is why even when he can barely summon a third of its power in the Soul Society arc, it rips apart Komamura's body and one-shots him, let alone the perfect version which is being amped by transcended spiritual pressure, which is far above that of the previous planetary feat shown by weaker characters, or Ichigo blocking the Sokyoku in the Soul Society arc, etc. To all 
of the people who downplay this feat when people attribute it to acting like a black hole or genuinely being one inside of the Kurohitsugi, you're scientifically incorrect and this shows you how much of a monster Dongai Ichigo actually is, let alone Mugetsu. The fact that the Kurohitsugi is emphasized by other characters that it completely wiped the Mimihagi from existence is further proof that it is acting this way. They go so far to say that Wall the Debris is even gone too to further put emphasis on that. And it's not like existence erasure is even uncommon in Bleach, as we've seen that Tosin used Hado 54 Hyen on Grimjow's arm, which is explicitly stated to be a flame attack that eradicates the very existence of its target, along with other Keto that act in the same fashion. And also, the basic normal arrows that Quincy's use, those things actually existence wipe the hollows that they kill, which was even a narrative point in the story because they weren't killing hollows correctly, whereas Shinigami killed them a different way. If you would like a further detailed explanation on the calculations and the scientific math for this Kurohitsugi feat, everything alongside supporting evidence is linked in the description. People who bring up the mountain cutting feat as a way to legitimately scale the power of Ichigo and Aizen sort of got me acting like <laughs> The best part about the infamous mountain feat isn't the act of destroying the mountain itself, it's how it gets destroyed. From them clashing blades in just casual sparring, they are making mountains not just break, but literally evaporate without the intent to even do it. For you to consciously state that this is a legitimate feat from either of them, and it displays the peak of their power, or any substance of them truly going all out in these current forms, would mean you have to concede that Aizen has less fire Firepower than second release Ukiora, or even Grimjow, who almost destroyed Lost Snow Chairs in his base form, the same place that could fit thousands of those mountains inside. It also contradicts feats from the first movie where 160 ish fodder soul reapers can destroy an entire dimension, which Mr. Kubo actually states is canon to the manga. And it also contradicts the Sokyoku statements from the data books and the manga, along with obviously, if this eyes and scales above Mr. Uh, Yamamoto, that means he would scale above Yamamoto's ability to destroy the Soul Society in Bankai. You could always sit the Yamamoto argument to the side, but even with that being said, the other two examples still exist, so it's a massive sort of you know, contradiction. I am beyond sick of hearing the mountain argument like we're still living in 2014. Get with the times, people. Please. I've seen the argument thrown around quite a lot recently that the Mugetsu form Ichigo goes into is actually just a Quincy technique like Uryu's Quincy Let's Steal, which he used against Mayuri Korotsuchi in the Soul Society arc. The only issue with this is that Ishin Kurosaki is the one who taught Ichigo how to use it and confirms that he has used it in the past. I'll explain how and when Ishin actually used his version of the Mugetsu when I make a video on him, but regardless, there is no evidence other than the coincidence fact that when these two techniques are used, the individuals who use them lose their powers after. In Ichigo's case, he appears to be using a form that operates incredibly similar to Sajin Komamura's Kakujo Tengen Nyaiho Dongai Jo. However, the only reason it appears in this Japanese looking deity form is because it is a mixture of his Quincy powers, Shinigami powers, and Hollow powers being combined all into one. Although there is no prerequisite that determines who a form looks in this case, Mr. Kubo just made it look incredibly cool, and we have seen similar looking forms from other Shinigami showing us that this isn't some Quincy technique or anomaly for that matter. To our knowledge as readers and watchers of Bleach, Ishin knows nothing about the Quincy or their practices other than what Masaki would have told him. And also, are people forgetting that for you to use a Quincy Letch deal, you need to actually have a particular item for it? The same item that the Quincy retired from combat due to the Volstanding being superior? Although there is no data book information, author statements, or anything from the manga and anime confirming such, Dongai Ichigo is actually able to react to Aizen's reforming technique, which many believe to be teleportation. During Aizen's first transformation with the Hogyoku, he claims he has surpassed both Hollow and Soul Reaper, and yet this feat was performed in his third form of the Hogyoku, meaning he has far surpassed something as simple as teleportation, which Shinigami can actually do with the Keto technique Sentan Hakuja. I won't say for certain, that this is legitimate teleportation, but if it is, this gives Ichigo absolutely insane reaction speeds in his Dongai form, on top of his sensory ability, which is underrated by many Bleach fans, and I've mentioned this in the past. The first thing Ichigo does when he appears in his Dongai form in Karakura,
Karakura Town is he scans the entirety of Karakura Town and can locate his sisters in an instant. Now once again, nothing is set in stone when it comes to the teleportation feat and whether or not it actually is, but Aizen has surpassed Shinigami at that stage. He has surpassed Sentan Hakuja and he actually knows how to use that Kido too. So I'm just saying, if it is true teleportation, Ichigo's pretty quick. One of the biggest questions I'm sure that we've all asked ourselves after watching Ichigo versus Aizen was, did he really need to use the final Getsuga Tensho against him? Interestingly, Aizen actually states that although he evolved into his monster stage, he still can't sense Ichigo before he even goes into Mugetsu. I've said this about three times now, I know, but it's relevant. One might say this doesn't prove anything, as Aizen was still able to damage him with a Fraggle. It seems very logical to assume that Ichigo wasn't fighting seriously until the very end when he wanted to end the actual battle. This is why he is able to then flex and break out of the floating white rings that Aizen formed around him while he had him by the throat. If Ichigo truly wasn't stronger in his Dongai form, he couldn't do that. It's just blatant common sense. It just seems to be the case that Ichigo wanted the fight over and he was truly frustrated with Aizen. You can see this tone from Ichigo when he wants to actually end the battle with Aizen after defeating Ukiyora in a battle that makes him uncomfortable when he realizes how the battle actually ended. And you also do need to keep in mind that Ichigo did just spend three straight months training with his Zanpakuto, building a stronger bond with it, watching his father suffer so that he could hopefully do enough to defeat the tyrant that is Aizen, and he just wanted things to be over. For Ichigo to be messing around in Dongai, he would be incredibly conflicted with the idea that he's about to lose his powers after the amount of time he did spend with White and Zongetsu inside of his head and learnt about the true thing that they want to protect. You can see this same depressed exhausted expression from Ichigo's face after the battle with Ukiora and during the entire battle with Aizen. He obviously wasn't going all out from the very start and he just wanted things to be over and done with. To end this part of the video, as we do see later on, even while Aizen's entire body gets eviscerated, he can still reform himself. So regardless of Ichigo being stronger in either form, he did need to use the Mugetsu at the end of the day, but it would not have made a difference to the outcome regardless. He was just lucky that Urahara had planted a keto seal that would activate when Aizen's powers lowered to a certain point. I mean, sure, Ichigo probably could have manhandled him in his Dongai form all day long and just continuously blow him away with Getsugas, but by doing this, it might have actually given Aizen the opportunity to transform multiple times and eventually surpass Ichigo. Because of this, Aizen would be incredibly frustrated and his will would make it so the Hogyoku would continuously surpass the previous strength that he had, whereas when he gets hit by the Mugetsu, he kind of just accepts that well, this is over, and then the loneliness which Ichigo talks about is finally realized and Aizen can't transform again in time to avoid the Keto Seal. The safer bet, honestly, was just to use his magnum opus and try to one-shot Aizen. You can even see that Ichigo is surprised that Aizen has the ability to regenerate from this, so he genuinely needed to use it, and thanks to Mr. Urahara appearing and activating that Keto, the day was saved. It still does suck that we never got to see him use a normal Getsuga Tensho while in Dongai, as the one he uses against Ginjo was like a damn Kamehameha, and that was done while he was in Shikai form. That thing would have been massive while in Dongai form. Like, I imagine it would have been the size of Boris's attack that he used against Saitama, like that kind of world-ending, devastating-like size. It would have been cool. Really annoying that we never got to see that, or actually a longer fight. I feel like if uh, Aizen versus Mr. Ichigo, in Dongai form had have been like 15 plus chapters, no one would really complain about it because it was really short considering the amount of importance that surrounded that final battle. Not necessarily that relevant to the point of this video, but I think we all agree on that. It should have been longer. But anyway guys, this is all I have to say on Mugetsu. I hope you all enjoyed this video and potentially learned something from it. My next video will be on one of the most popular Esparta, so you'll definitely enjoy that when it drops, unless I decide to upload a filler video because I usually do stuff like that. But anyway guys, I just want to say that I'm going to be live on Twitch right now which is linked in the description below, so if you want to ask me any questions, you want to come hang out and talk about Bleach or inquire about this video and, you know, maybe you're a bit confused about some of the stuff that I said in this video and you'd like to get my straight up opinion or, you know, my actual explanation of what I meant if it wasn't clear enough in this video, go to the description, go follow me on Twitch, it is simply at Clyde, C-L-Y-D-E, I am live right now, straight after the video is up, so come and hang out. And also, if you want to see a comprehensive, like, deep dive look into specifically Aizen, because although I did touch on Aizen in this video, I haven't actually done a solo Aizen video, so 
If you want to see a very good video that talks about Eisen only, go check out Seth the Programmer's video on Eisen, which is also linked in the description below, and go give that video a thumbs up. With that being said, I just want to say thank you all for watching, and have yourselves a great day.